Uh, now we come uh, to the movements of the Earth crust, and this is Narendra Kumar, and we are doing this chapter of Earth uh, from the Objective Academy, uh, and this is ninth class social studies syllabus, and we are now doing the movements of the Earth crust, fifth unit in the first chapter called Earth. Uh, movements of the Earth crust. The shapes and positions of the continents may seem fixed. At the time scale of human experience, you must understand this sentence. When you look at the earth, we know that America will be America only, South Africa will be South Africa only, India, Asia will be Asia only, only due if we consider the human um, experience of time, like thousand years, two thousand years. But, however, when you look at how old earth is, continents have moved, collided, merged and then being torn apart again. Now this is fascinating. All the South Africa, South America, Asia, all, all these continents, if you see the whole longer period of time, very, very long, you will find that they have moved, he has, seen, he has used so many words here, collided. That means one part collided with another, merged, one part merged with another and one part split into two parts. Torn apart. Torn apart means split into two parts. Mountains have risen and been raised to the ground. So mountains came up and sometimes mountains vanished also. Both happened. Oceans have formed and dried up. So oceans formed somewhere and they even dried up. Valleys have been carved. Valleys, deep valleys, you know, the low valleys between mountains. And so on during the course of the earth's eventful history. E-V-E-N-T-F-U-L. Eventful means so many exciting events happening there. In the early 20th century, early 20th century, a German meteorologist, meteorolo meteorologist, M-E-T-E-O-R-O-L-O-G-I-S-T, and geophysicist, G-E-O physicist, Alfred Wagner, Introduced, introduced the theory, very famous theory this is, of continental drift. Drifting, you know, moving slowly here, there. Continental drift, obviously the words itself give the meaning. Continents drifted, moves very slowly. He gave that theory to describe and partially explain the present arrangement of continents and ocean basins. So he gave an exact idea. Why are the continents as we experience and see them now as they are? And why do we have the oceans? He postulated, P-O-S-T-U-L-A-T-E-D, postulate means he gave a theory. A massive supercontinent, which he called Tangia, Greek for whole land. Whole land. W H O L E. So he gave a name to the huge continent. One continent only there was in the world, he said, Pangaea, as having existed 220 million years ago, that is 22 crore years ago. These continents were not like how they are now. They were one whole landmass. And then breaking apart into several large sections. So that whole Pangaea broke apart into several large sections. He suggested that these sections moved away from each other. So what he said was that these big Pangaea broke into sections and they slowly, very, 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 very slowly. If you consider the human time frame, it's not at all moving, moving also. So don't think that the continents are moving. We won't be moving like a ship or something. Okay. He suggested that these sections moved away from each other over millions of years, some continents collided with others. They are still moving around. They are still moving around very, 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 very slow. If you think about the human time scale. Pangaea is a hypothetical continent. Hypothetical means we have never seen it. Continent. From which present continents originated, originated by the drift of Mesozoic era to the present. Mesozoic era was a time a certain species of animals came from that time till now this has been happening. Wagner hypothesized that the supercontinent of Pangaea broke up to form. Now what did he what did that big supercontinent form? One Laurentia L-A-U-R-E-N-S-I-A present North America, Greenland and all of Eurasia north of Indian subcontinent. So first that was formed. 
Laurentia had present North America, Greenland, and all of Eurasia. Eurasia, Eurasia is the combination of Europe and Asia, North of Indian subcontinent, North of India. Second was Gondwana land, present South America, Africa, Madagascar, India, Arabia, Malaysia, East Indies, Australia, and Antarctica. Antarctica. So, first these two were formed. These two blocks were separated by a long shallow inland sea called the Tethys Sea. So, what he proposed was there were this continent broke into two parts. The first part was, as he says, Laurentia. The second part was the Gondwana land. So, like, like from top to bottom split. These two blocks were separated by a long shallow. Shallow means not very deep. S H A L L O W. Inland sea called the Tethys Sea. T E T. H Y S C. It took millions of years for the continents to reach the present shapes and positions on the globe. So after millions of years, they became what you now see in the atlas. Even today, many of the continents are moving very slowly, pushing each other. Okay, and we will read about this in greater detail in the next chapter. So we are trying to go deep into this simple depth of in-depth uh, understanding of geography. So it actually gives you and opens your eyes to the wonder of what's happening in that. See, normally people think, ah, and this is always there and, you know, um, nothing else is there. But as you go into real deep into education, educating yourself, you discover this fantastic and very fascinating points. So that completes the unit. Fifth, and the next unit is the Earth's grid system. So man has created a grid. Those grid is not there. Their imaginary lines, he has something called longitudes and latitudes. We'll see it in the next section.